Hey guys, Boris House from BK Force. Welcome to our Force Day Technos for 11 7 13. As always, trading for any change on margin carries a high level risk, may not be a form of us. So I ask you to read this disclaimer very carefully to understand all the risks of trading, trading margin and seek advice from a financial analyzer if you have any doubts. All right, let's take a look at the charts here. Euro dollar still acting pretty well for the fourth day in a row, holding the 3450 support. We have not made any real downside progress for four days in a row. That's generally a very good sign of support. Unless, of course, it's just simply a pause that refreshes. So at this point, it looks very probable that we have a direction either way. Either we break the lows here at 34.40, and we possibly have 33.50 as a, as a potential downside target here as we unwind this whole big rally. Or we have a counter trend rally here to 3600 on perhaps more than um, perhaps a hawkish ECB. Big question tomorrow, of course, ECB, that's the key risk in front of us on the euro. And we'll see. Uh, which way it bounces. Uh, the one thing I'm relatively confident about, of course, you never know, but I am relatively confident about it, is that we get volatility one way or the other. So we hopefully should have a 100-point day tomorrow in the euro one way or the other, um, with 36 to the top side, 33.50, the near, first near-term target to the downside. Breaks um, on the top side are 35.50, on the downside are 34.50 or 34.40, whichever way you want to look at it. But those are the key levels in the euro. Um, Aussie is... Also in a little bit of a stall, holding this 95, but not being able to take out 95.50. The break 95.50 opens up the run towards 96 and kind of a repair move towards the um, uh, 97 level. The break below uh, 95 creates the support level at 94, 94.20. So the critical thing here is you have to have a very, very negative move here to take out this 94, which seems to be a pretty decent support level here uh, in the Aussie. We'll be watching that pretty carefully. As night develops as well. Uh, cable doing well, but could not hold the 61. It really needs to close above 61 in order to have a, a truly bullish construct. Otherwise, what, we, what we're basically looking at here is a um, another lower high, kind of a flame out lower high at the 61 level, and then it could come back and a return back to 59 support. If we can close above 61, it opens up the run towards the test of the 62s, which is obviously very, very heavy overhead. But the potential here for another 100 points in the cable looks pretty good. By the way, this also creates a really interesting cross trade today, tomorrow, all depending on where we're at as far as euro goes. It's all going to be a, uh, um, a pro or anti-euro trade. If we get a very dovish ECB, there's a potential here for us to really challenge this 83.50, 83.30 lows in the euro pound and possibly even go all the way out to 8300s on a very, very negative euro trade. Uh, to the top side, if euro does get bullish, it's a retest of the 8450s on the, on the euro pound. So both ways look kind of interesting on the cross. Um, and then lastly, but not leastly, um, yen still holding. Holding this 9550, 9850, excuse me, uh, basing quite uh, impressively. We basically had a, a good uh, almost two and a half, two weeks at 98. But the critical thing here is, of course, the 99s. We've got to, again, close above 99s and hold them in front of the GDP. It's going to be interesting uh, to see if we can do that. If GDP, of course, prints a little hotter, uh, we have a chance to hold 99s. But really, the, of course, the big event is going to be the NFPs. If those uh, print with a modicum of strength, then the picture completely changes and we have a potential run towards the really big number, which is the 100 number, the dollar yen. If it doesn't, if we have a negative move, then the downside, the near-term downside is 98. And then the further downside is 97. Both of those are relatively strong support levels. You really got to have a very, very negative um, construct to break both of those levels uh, to the downside. So I think there's more. It's asymmetrical in the sense that yen still looks like an upside bias, and more potential to the upside than it is to the downside, um, given the uh, the structure of the technicals as it stands right now. So that's pretty much how the day shapes up. Tremendous amount of uh, uh, event risk coming up starting tomorrow with ECB on the books with um, employment, Australia employment coming up right now. And of course, um, looking forward to the NFPs on Friday. Boris Schlossberg, PK Forks, over and out. Talk to you then.